Welcome back to our series here on format strings and format string exploits. In this video, we're going to discuss how format strings can be used with printf to write data. Now, writing data with a print function certainly sounds a little bit strange. So how do we do it? Well, it turns out printf implements a substitution percent %n, and percent %n will dereference a pointer from the stack and write the number of bytes written so far to that address. So if we look at this example, we have an integer name length, then we call printf percent %s percent %n, where the first parameter is name and the second parameter is a reference to name length. When this printf command is ran, name will be displayed to standard out and the number of bytes written, which in this case is just the length of name, will be stored in name length. That way, when printf is called a second time, the name length will always be correct because it is being set in the first printf and used in the second printf. Uh, you also see applications where percent %n makes sense when you're doing any type of like dynamic formatting. You may be printing some user provided input and you don't necessarily know how long it is. By using percent %n, we can display it and store the length at the same time. So there are legitimate use cases for this. However, percent %n is also right for exploitation. So let's take a look at why this is bad in a demo. So I'm gonna start off with the same code example that we had in the prior video. And I'm gonna change this to be an example where writing data will get us the flag. And to do that, I'm going to have a print flag value And we will initially set it to be zero. Now, if for whatever reason it is not zero, then we will open the flag read it into some buffer and then we will write it to standard out. Now we'll need to set the buffer. We define the buffer, declare it here. So it can just be here on the stack. And we'll need to include some additional header files. Okay, so now if we compile this and we pass it percent %x, we still get b fleet and we don't get a flag. So rather than spamming percent %p and trying to guess what where is this print flag pointer, uh, we're going to use gdb and explore the binary and see if we can calculate it. So let's do that. We will run the binary in GDB. We'll set a breakpoint at main. Now, right now, we are at the very beginning of main. And if we look, we need this prologue to happen before we can start reasoning about it because we want to be in the function frame of main. So I'm going to move forward several instructions so that RBP and RSP are set. So now if we disassemble main, I want to find where in the binary is this comparison happening? Where are we checking printf? And as we look up from here, uh, we see the open read write, so it's going to be above this. Uh, we have test EAX EAX. So this is very likely where that's occurring. Uh, that's the check. And this is the jump that either uh, reads the flag out or it does not. And we see that EAX is RAX and RAX is RBP minus hex 20. So let's print RBP minus 
hex 220. And the other value I'm interested in is RSP. And if we look at the distance between these two locations, it's hex 20. Now, when printf is marching forward, forward looking for arguments, they are all of sort length 8, which means if we take our x20 and divide it by 8, we get 4. Uh, we also know that the sixth argument is the first one on the stack. That would be uh, RSP. So 6 plus 4 is 10. So we would assume that the print flag value is the 10th argument uh, from printf or from printf's perspective here. So let's verify that. We'll run a dot out and we will give it just some bytes followed by percent 10 dollar sign n. Now the a's are here so that some bytes are written out. If I just do a percent 10 n, this should write one to the address that is the 10th argument of printf. And we see that that is what happened. Uh, we output a, we then write one to the pointer that is the 10th argument to print F, which in this case is this pointer right here, print flag, which sets the value to be one, which passes this check. And that is why we see flag. Uh, the rest of this output is because write is just running on past what was uh, in the flag file. Now in that demo, we happen to have a pointer that was pointing to the exact value we wanted to set. And it wasn't that far away, and so it was pretty easy to find, and that was great. But what other strategies might we want to consider if that isn't the case? Well, one thing to think about is, what if our format string buffer is sitting on the stack? Well, we control the format string buffer, that's why it's a format string exploit. So we could put a pointer in the format string and then reference ourselves. Alternatively, there could be a pointer on the stack. It may not point to exactly what we want, but it may point to something that we might want to influence. And so it's still worth considering and looking at what pointers are available to be accessed. And then lastly, let's think about how base pointers work. A saved base pointer points to the prior saved base pointer. And we can exploit this fact when writing a format string exploit. By finding the offset to the first saved base pointer, in this case, ebp1. ebp1 will be a pointer to a known location, in this case, ebp2. And so we can write a format string exploit that sets the value that is pointed to by ebp1 to write the value at ebp2. We can then find the format string offset to ebp2 and write to the address that is pointed to by ebp2, which is a value that we wrote from ebp1. And so we use ebp1 to write the address that we really want to write to at ebp2 and then use ebp2 to write to anywhere in memory uh, that we decide. And by leveraging this, uh, we have a write that works uh, despite ASLR. But let's go back and look at uh, what happens if our buffer is on the stack and we can put a valid pointer into it. So in this example here with the base pointers, we are looking up the stack. We are looking at prior uh, stack frames. But when printf is called, what happens? there's going to be a stack frame below the format string. And what this means is that we should be able to find an offset from RSP to the format string buffer. 
Now, I'm not going to solve this problem in this video, but it's going to be very similar to when we were finding return addresses or offsets to a return address in a buffer overflow. In that case, we used Pwn Cyclic. Now, Pwn Cyclic will not solve this exact problem, but a similar type of logic will. Another problem with using percent %n that wasn't in the demo is that percent %n by default writes four bytes. What if I want to set eight bytes? Well, I could use percent %ln, or I need to set two bytes. Well, that would be percent %hn, and if I need to just write a single byte, just change one, I could use percent %hhn. Now, how do we control what to write? In the demo, we just wrote a single byte, there is a single a, what if I need to write a very specific value? Well, we need to take advantage of another one of printf's features, uh, which is padding. Uh, we don't have a slide on this, so I'd strongly recommend referencing the uh, printf man pages, which is man3 printf. But what we have going on here is we have a character buffer, and then we have printf followed by a very large, or percent, very large number x. Now this first substitution uh, is saying, print or interpret buff, which is a character array, and a character array is a pointer. And we're going to interpret it as a hexadecimal value, which is why it's X. And we're going to provide it with this very large amount of padding. So there's gonna be a bunch of white space before this hexadecimal value. And we're going to display all of that to standard out. The second printf substitution here is percent one dollar sign N. And so the percent one dollar sign is we want to reference the first parameter, which again is buff. But because we are doing n, this substitution is writing this number of bytes to buff. And this should result in a, b, c, d being set or being written to buff. But there is certainly a cost to doing this. Uh, let's, let's take a quick look at it. So I have that exact demo code over here. Uh, we have our character array buff. We have our printf. I'm printing out a few new lines uh, just for prettiness sake. Uh, and then we're going to write out the contents of buff. So let's compile that. And we're going to run this. Now I'm not sure that this captures on video, but at the bottom of my terminal, the cursor is just going utterly wild and bouncing all over the place. And we're not hanging, we're not thinking, we're not stuck. But what we're waiting on is for all of the white space from this padding to display on the terminal before a hexadecimal value. And so we're, we're just waiting for that output. And here we see uh, BABBBA74. Uh, this right here is the hexadecimal interpretation of the buff pointer. Then I have a couple new lines and I see ABCD. The ABCD output is the output from writing the contents of buff. So we were able to set that, but you could see that that took quite a while and that was only to write four bytes. So what do we do if we need to write eight bytes? I need to write a full address. How do we handle some of these, these other scenarios? The answer is to combine some of the features that we've seen previously with printf. So here is a printf string or printf format string that does the exact same thing as the previous example, except it's going to do it without outputting nearly as much noise and padding and white space bytes to the terminal. Let's take a quick look and see how it works. First, we have percent %65x. This is going to be 65 bytes of padding followed by a hexadecimal value. Then we're going to percent %1 sign $HHN. So we're going to write a single byte with the value 65. Now 65 happens to be the numerical representation of capital A. Then we're going to repeatedly write percent %C followed by writing a byte. So that is going to increment the total number of bytes written. So we will be writing 65, 66, 67, 68 in sequence, which is A, B, C, D. Now I have the example code right here. If we compile it 
and give it a run, we see that we get the very similar output to the first example, except I don't get pages and pages of padding and white space flooding across my terminal. But we still see that ABCD is the value written to buff. Just significantly faster with much less noise. Now, one of the things worth noting here is ABCD is a series of increasing values. So that's relatively easy to construct a format string that'll write this. What if I wanted to write DCBA, which would be a series of decreasing bytes? I might have to get a little bit more creative, but we're going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer. And just when you thought we were done talking about the many features of printf, we have one more to discuss, and that is dynamic padding size. Dynamic padding size is specified with the star character. And what it allows you to do is instead of hard coding the number of padding bytes that you need, you can say the number of padding bytes for this particular substitution is located in another parameter. And so in the example above here, we have percent star 10 dollar sign C. This will take the 10th parameter, interpret it as a number that represents the amount of padding that is needed for the single character that would normally be displayed with percent C. We'll output that many bytes to the terminal. Next, we have percent 11 dollar sign N. That is going to work just like percent N, which will write the number of bytes that were printed out to the terminal we're going to write that count to the memory pointed to by the 11th parameter. The end result of this interaction is a direct memory copy. But keep in mind that we're not being clever here and writing one byte at a time. So if we're going to try and copy a whole address using this technique, we're going to dump so much content to standard out that it becomes completely unrealistic to use. However, it is worth noting because you may see it.